This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a really interesting 40 millimeter stainless steel padlock made by Unity. Unity is a company out of California that appears to sell Chinese manufactured moving and storage supplies. What makes this particular lock so interesting is that it has the best fit and finish I have ever seen on an inexpensive Chinese disc detainer lock. And to make things even better, they appear to have copied the core retention system that you'll find in high-end locks like the Abloy 341 or the Abus 88, which means we can remove and possibly even improve this core. But first, let's see what it takes to pick into this. Now normally the first thing I do when I pick a lock like this is rotate all of the discs as far clockwise as I can. However, on this lock I try to rotate them and they will not move, which is odd because when you put the key in, it turns freely, no problems. So I looked a little bit more carefully. I actually haven't had this apart yet. And it turns out some of the discs will rotate a little bit, others will not and I don't really understand the system that determines what moves and what doesn't. So I've just rotated all of the discs as far clockwise as I can. And if we look carefully inside of this lock, you can see it varies depending on which disc, how far I can rotate it. So let's get our disc detainer pick in there now and see if we can make some sense of what we feel. Okay, I think I'm set on the first disc. So let's go to the second now. Second is fully rotated clockwise. Let's check the third. Third will not move. The fourth will rotate. I think I've got that as far clockwise as it will go. Fifth one moved a little bit. Sixth one moved a bit, and the seventh will not move. Okay, let's go to the beginning now and see if we can actually find gates for all those discs now. Number one, or actually number two, just got a little click out of two. Okay, I think I missed a disc. Nope, okay. That was three, he feels set. Four, got a little click there. There we go, and we opened up. Okay, so something strange is going on inside of here. I don't know why some discs rotate, some will not. But fortunately, we can take this apart and figure out why that is. Now, this right here is a threaded core that can only be removed after we, we take out a set screw and you can only access that set screw once the shackle's open. You can see the shackle blocks the hole that we would need to reach through. So now that the shackle's open, we can reach through there with a two millimeter Allen wrench, take the set screw out. And if they got the details right on this, usually on locks like the Abloys, this groove and the key are identical thicknesses which means you can use this as a screwdriver, and it appears they did in fact do that. One interesting note about this key, let me actually zoom in for you. It's the only disc detainer key I have ever seen that has the bidding engraved on it. Never seen that before. Okay, let's get this plug out. Looks like it's pretty thick and very well machined. And there's our core, and let's see if I can take this out without losing too many pieces. Okay, we lost our balls. The sidebar just fell out into my hand. Let's actually put that sidebar back in place. Like in what I see, everything is made out of stainless steel. On some of the cheaper Chinese-made locks, this lock housing and actuator are actually made out of plastic. Some of them are made out of some cheap pot metal. That's actually the improved version. 
but a nice stainless steel one I have never seen before. You can turn this around and it is becoming rapidly apparent why some of those discs would not move. If you look at each of the discs, you can see there are little nubs that stick out from each one that limit the rotation of the disc to about 90 degrees. However, on one, two, three of these discs, those nubs are enlarged, in the case of this seventh disc, significantly enlarged to the point that you actually can't move that disc at all. And I'm not entirely sure why they would have done it, because that significantly decreases the number of permutations that you would have for this lock. Normally, let's see, there'd be five cuts, seven discs, so... 5 to the 7, 78,000 different permutations that you could have. On this one, however, it would be, let's see, 5 to the 4th times, I'm guessing, 2 for disk 3, times 3 for disk 6, and then just 1 for disk 7. And that is 3,750. And we have limited the number of combinations by 20 times, 20 times. I have absolutely no idea why they would do something like this. It makes less than no sense to me. Okay, let's look at the top view of one of these discs. You can see we have no false gates cut into it. So if we were going to improve this, what we would do is file some notches that were not deep or wide enough to act as a true gate but would just roughen this surface up such that we couldn't pick it easily it would it would interfere with our feedback if we wanted to improve it even more and i'm gonna nerd out just a little bit there's actually a lot of potential here what we could do is file these little rotation limiters down so we could on three, six, and seven. So we would file away all of this portion, all of this portion, and all of this portion. That would increase the number of incorrect permutations that we have on this lock. And it would also eliminate the possibility of tensioning off of this bottom disc, which apparently on this lock you can tension on, off the bottom or the top disc. Then we could be really tricky and eliminate the possibility of tensioning from the top disc, which is what I just did. Because we have two other number one cuts here, we could actually tension from these middle discs and file away a little portion of the lock housing right here. Now, why would we do that? We would do it because when I tension off of that top disc, what I do is rotate this disc until the nub contacts the lock body and then it pushes the lock body in a rotational direction. And you'll notice where it does push against the lock body is exactly where the gate is. If I were to file away a bit of this lock body right here, we would have passed the gate by the time these two make the connection. So we could easily, with a little bit of file work, add a whole bunch of false gates, increase the number of possibilities of incorrect possibilities for this lock, eliminate the possibility of tensioning off the top or the bottom disc. Essentially, you're turning this into an ABUS Plus core. There are a lot of possibilities with what you could do with this lock. Now, would I do that? No, it's probably not worth the time because this is only a tiny little 40 millimeter lock. However, if I could find a larger version of this, a 60, 70, maybe 80 millimeter version of this, it might be worth the time to turn this into, into a very, very difficult lock to pick because it would only take about a half hour of file work. So if I didn't lose you already, that's it for today. If you do have any questions or comments about this lock, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.